It works. Good morning. It is still morning, isn't it? Hi, I'm Tina Scoto. I'm a psychic medium, trance healer, and I also do a lot of teaching. And what I'm going to talk about today is coming out of the spiritual closet from the corporate world to the spirit world. And it really felt like if I was in the closet for other things, it really felt like this huge weight was lifted off of me and I came out of the closet. It was just great. Because when people came up to me and they asked me, what do you do? I could be honest and tell them. But that wasn't my intention. Um, when I first started in this, um, I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about mediumship, psychic, spirit world, or anything like that. When I was a little girl, I couldn't remember. I have these memories of being so frozen with fear in my bedroom. I didn't want to get out of bed. I knew there was something in my closet. I was three years old. I remember even wetting the bed and taking the punishment for wetting my bed because I was so afraid to get out of the closet or out of the, I was so afraid to get out of my room because there was something in the closet. And then I remember my mom telling me I used to have nightmares during the daytime. She thought it was dark shadows. How many of you remember dark shadows? Yes, it was the vampire soap opera in the 60s. So she stopped me from, re from watching that. The nightmare still continued. I didn't know what was going on as a kid. Nobody in my family knew. Um, so I went through life like that. I used my abilities, my psychic abilities. I thought it was street smarts, common sense, book smart. You know, I, I just thought it was something that I had. I didn't know I was using my psychic ability to, to climb the, the corporate ladder until weird things started happening when I was in corporate. Um, I remember having some of my um, employees come to me and I would see things that was going to happen with them. I had one employee come to me and he's like, you know, my father-in-law's in the emergency room. And they had an uneasy feeling about what was happening. And I got the hit, you need to move him to another hospital. That hospital's not capable of handling what he needs. They moved him. And when they moved him and when he got to the other hospital, he had a massive heart attack and they were able to save him. So I would get little hits like that. I even had an employee one time come in my office. And, um, and I heard that he was quitting. I knew he was quitting. And I said, you're quitting? And he looked at me like, what? I go, yeah, you're quitting. He goes, well, I didn't tell you. I said, okay, well, I just figured that. So then he starts talking, and then I hear clairaudiently he's going to a Nissan dealership. And I blurted it out, not even realizing what was happening to me. And I said, you're going to a Nissan dealership, but you don't know anything about Nissans. You're a Dodge mechanic. He goes, I didn't tell you that. I go, yes, you did. He goes, no, I didn't. I go, yes, you did. And by the third time, I'm like, uh-oh. He didn't. What just happened? So I had a lot of weird things like that happen during my time in corporate America. Now, mind you, I was a service and parts director for car dealerships. I started out in the parts industry, moved my way up into service. And I'm telling you, that was the best training I ever had on how to deal with people. Spirit had been grooming me my entire life and me not knowing it. I was oblivious to this kind of stuff. So to just go back a little bit, um, I'm going to talk about some things that were catalysts in my life that propelled me and made me who I am today, and I'm so grateful for these moments. Now, you may think they're tragedies. To me, I look at it as spiritual growth opportunities and what an opportunity I was given. So from the time of 1988 to 92, I lost my mother, I lost my brother, I lost my grandmother, my grandfather, and an aunt. My mother and my brother were my immediate family because my parents were divorced. My mom and I were out horseback riding one evening and her horse took off running and she died. She lacerated her liver on the saddle horn and died instantly. That rocked my world. She was my best friend, I was 23. If it wouldn't have been uh, for my husband here, who was my rock, to get me through that, I don't know how I would have made it. I didn't know about mediums then or psychics, none of that. So I'm still going about my little world here, and my brother was dying of AIDS at the same time. So I spent time with my brother, and I went to a meditation with him. Now my brother, um, his name was Kenny, he was gay. Wonderful, wonderful man, wonderful. 
he was a little bit in the spirit stuff, but I wasn't. He, he had crystals and things like that. So I remember him taking me to a meditation one time. And I did it just to be the supportive little sister to go to this meditation with my brother because, you know, he was dying of AIDS. I wanted to spend time with him. So we go in this meditation. It's in a little house in Tucson. And I remember holding hands, and that made me uncomfortable. Touching other people that I did not know in a circle. I go, this is woo-woo. What am I doing here? This is crazy. I am not this woo-woo. But I'm like, okay, I got to be here for my brother. During that meditation, it scared the bejeebies out of me of what happened to me. My heart started pounding. I got extremely hot. I thought it was going to explode from the inside out. I mean, and I could see everything in my body. I could see my organs, the cells, everything. It was like that movie um, where they inject a spaceship in the body, the little ship in the body, and you, you travel through the body. That's what it looked like to me. And the next thing I know, I'm standing on a mesa with Jesus. I'm like, what the heck? I'm not a religious person. I'm like, okay, this is unusual. And then the next thing I know, the meditation's ending and I couldn't get out of that house fast enough. Never did another meditation until several years later. And I had another experience that was mind blowing like that. None of that put me on my spiritual path though. I had little hits of things and that, and then I started seeing dead people. That changed everything. And they wouldn't leave me alone. And I'm very clairvoyant, so I see them in my mind's eye. Um, and all this started happening, and I'm still in the corporate world, right? And I meet a lady, and, and she does a reading on me, and she goes, you know, she says, Spirit's telling me they give you a year and a half, two years tops, and you'll be doing this work. And I go, no, I'm not. I'm not going to leave a six-figure job to do this. This is something that I'll do in my part-time when I retire. At least that was my plan. Spirit had a different different plan for me. That's what I call the spiritual two by four. Don't wait for it because it hurts. August 1st, I went into work, get called into the manager's office, the general manager. And he goes, you know, we're, um, we're going to have to let you go. And I go, really? Why? Oh, well, we're just going in a different direction and you're not in that direction. That's the excuse I was given. I'd worked for that company for seven years. I had been in the business 33 years. I was very good at what I did. And he fired me. And I'm like, wow. So that was a huge adjustment. Part of me was doing the happy dance inside it. Yeah. And part of me was like, oh, my gosh, I'm the breadwinner of the family. What are we going to do? Right? So when I get home, you know, and, and, and sit with it a little bit, I decided to start my spiritual path because it was a calling this is a calling for me. If it was about the money, I would have stayed in corporate America. It's not. It's about being of service, service to God, service to spirit, service to community. So I chose to take this path. And I told my husband, I go, we're just going to have to tighten the belt a little bit. We're going to have to get creative. And I'm going to give it two years and I'll reevaluate the business after two years. And that's what I did. And that's where I'm at currently. That was in 2015, and I've been successfully supporting my family for all those years with this work. Now, I run across a lot of people that use their psychic abilities for everyday usage. You know, uh, it, it always blows my husband's mind that I got as far as I did in corporate because I suck at math. Okay, but I can read people, and I'm very intuitive. I healed cars and I healed people because when the cars broke, the people broke. I can't tell you how many people would sit in my office and tell me their problems and I would help them. But that no longer served me. I needed to do it in a larger platform. And I always wanted to reach the masses and that's what I've always told God, I want to reach the masses. How I reach the masses is I'm like a kindergarten teacher for spiritual people. When you just start out on your spiritual journey and you want to learn about all the different modalities and all the, the, the different things out there, people gravitate to me because I teach classes on that. I'm like the kindergarten teacher for the spirit world. But by doing so, I have a lot of wonderful 
people that are colleagues now doing their work, i.e. Lisa. She's wonderful. She went through some of my classes and she's taken it to the 10th degree. And I'm very proud of her. So I can go through any of these psychic fairs and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember you and I remember you. I am reaching the masses one person at a time, one teacher at a time, one um, practitioner at a time. That's how I reach people. So you can choose to use your, your abilities to do what I do, or you can choose to use your abilities in your everyday life. How many of you are moms? You're already intuitive, right? You know when your kid's lying or doing something wrong. My son still tries to get over on me, and I'm like, really, son? I'm psychic. Come on. You're trying again to lie to me? Okay. But that's psychic ability. That's intuition. The best, intu the best people that use their intuitions are cops and crooks because they're using their ability to stay alive. I know a lot of people that use their abilities in their everyday work. They're psychic. They're intuitive. They're using them. Everybody has these abilities. Everybody can do this to some degree. And how I give you an, anal an analogy of that, basketball. I'm from Indiana, Hoosiers. Come on, basketball. And I can teach you how to play basketball. I can teach you how to dribble, how to shoot the ball. And you can have fun doing it. Are you a Michael Jordan? Probably not. Okay. But you can do it and have fun and be good to a certain degree, depending on how much you put into it. Now, there are some people that have natural abilities. It just naturally happens. My abilities just come online. I am spirit taught. I listen to spirit. I follow. And then I get confirmation. I'm a skeptic until proven different, believe it or not. I'm not really into the woo-woo stuff. It's got to be factual. I have to prove it. It has to be logical to me. And everything that I've done has proven that to me. My mediumship, I use my mediumship for healing. I'm a trans healer. I allow spirit to work through me to work on the person on the table and they physically get touched. You will physically feel spirit work on you during my healing sessions. That's how I use my mediumship. I'm also an evidential medium like Michelle Claire, but that's Michelle's forte. Mind's healing and teaching. Now, going back from transitioning from, this, from corporate to the spirit world, you know, I lost all my friends. They didn't understand. I'm the crazy one, even though they research me all the time on my website. Okay, but I'm the crazy one. Um, and, you know, you're going to have that. You're, as you're in your spiritual world, your frequency is going to shift and change and your vibration is going to go up. And as you do that, there's going to be individuals that can't hang in that frequency. And you're, they're going to leave you on your spiritual path. And it'll happen even if you decide not to do this as a profession, you want to do it just for fun, to fulfill your soul purpose. You're still going to have people that fall off because they can't hang in your frequency because you're striving to be more spiritual. You're striving to be a better human. And that's okay. They're divinely perfect on their path. And that's what I want to, everybody has a path and they're divinely perfect on it. Just hold a space of absolute love and no judgment for them with healthy boundaries because some of them are toxic. You know that. Okay. How many of here are doing things, spiritually speaking, um, professionally or wanting to? Awesome. Okay. And how many just want to maybe use it for their own personal use? Okay, you can strengthen those. You know, what's your spiritual workout? What are you doing to strengthen your spiritual muscles? You know, that's how you get better at things. You practice and you get better. I always used to play a game like uh, the phone would ring and I'd say, okay, it's so-and-so before I pick it up. And it's so-and-so. Or as I'm driving, I'm like, okay, that person's going to make a sharp left-hand turn. I need to be prepared. Sure enough, that would happen. Just common sense stuff like that. I used it in corporate when a mechanic would come to me and say, hey, I've got this car, we have this problem. I'm not sure what it is, but it's between like three things. Intuitively, psychically, I knew what would fix the car. 
so it would fix the car. I knew when my employees were lying to me. I had one young man that lied to me, and I knew where he lived. He lived right down the street from the car dealership, so I drove by. Nothing was happening like he said it was. So I fired him because he didn't show up for work. That young man had a drug problem. He went to rehab. His father found out because his father came in and talked to me, and I told him what happened. They put him in rehab. I think like six months later, he came in and thanked me. It saved his life. Intuitively, I knew that I needed to go, and I needed to call him on his crap, and I needed to, to hold him accountable. That's how I used my abilities. Okay, so you can do both. But if you choose not to do what I do, that's fine. But it will enrich your life by becoming more spiritual, to be more connected to God, to source creator. Okay, I look at the spirit world as my friends, team. They help me. I talk to them like friendship. And then there's God. I have a close connection to God, which always blows my mind when you have people that aren't really, um, they don't believe in what you do and they bash you a little bit. They don't realize how connected you are to God. I just went to a dinner party the other day and I invited these ladies. I said, hey, I'm having a free event at my house Sunday. It's a sisterhood of healers. You can come in and get a, a, a reading and a healing. It's free. It's donation based if you want. It's from 10 to 1130. And a lady looked at me and she goes, I don't believe in anything that you do. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. And I said, you know that, that in the Bible, because I knew she was real. <laughs> I said, in the Bible, there's, there's healers that lay hands on and do healing work. I said, I work with the gold Christ light healing modality. And I left it at that because I'm not going to change her. But you're going to run into people like that on your spiritual path. Don't judge them. Just hold a space of absolute love for them because they're, they're divinely perfect on their path. And I want you to really remember that any time that you feel that you're trying to judge someone or something like that happens, just say, you just think, you know what? They're divinely perfect right where they're at because they signed up for that path and they're exactly where they're at. So you just hold a space for them. Now, how many of you think that you're, you're following your, your soul purpose, your soul path? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an analogy on how to feel into whether or not you're on your soul path. You know, my job, I was there for 33 years and doing well at it, making money. But it got to the point where something was missing. It wasn't fulfilling for me anymore. And that's why I had to change my mindset. I was healing people and healing cars because it, it, it wasn't about the money. And, you know, in corporate, it's about the money and moving the numbers and the figures and all that. And um, so that's why I got shifted off my, off my job, because I wasn't fulfilling my soul path. And I didn't realize it, but it was harder to get up and go to work. The energy felt heavier. Everything I tried to do was, it was like a little more of a struggle. I had to work harder at it. It wasn't flowing. Energetically, it was icky. And I wasn't paying attention to that because I didn't want to listen to spirit. And I got that spiritual two by four where I got fired out of the blue. I'd never been fired in my life. I wasn't even written up. So feel the energy of where you're going. If you have to work at it and force it, stop and say, why is this not aligning with me? Now, here's a visualization. You're on a river. All rivers flow downstream, most of them anyway. There's a couple in the world that don't. You're in a canoe with your paddle. The left side of the river is swirls and currents, but it's going downstream. The right side's like glass. When I was in corporate, I was on that left side in my canoe, paddling my butt off, trying to keep that canoe straight, trying to keep it from tipping over or going backwards. I was still going downstream, but I wasn't fulfilling my sole purpose, my sole path. I had to work at it. I was still successful, but it was a lot of work. Moving over to the right side is where I'm at currently, and my paddle is in my canoe, and I'm just gliding. If the energy doesn't align, pay attention to it. If it doesn't align, you're not on your soul path. Okay?
and just step back and take a look and say, why? What is wrong about this situation? I, I work with a lot of people on getting them to, to realize what their soul path is and how to align with it. For some reason, they have gifted me with the ability to be able to say, yes, you can do this, and why don't you try this? And there's, I have a few practitioners out there doing unusual work because spirit had guided them in that direction. Sarah Lyle, she does spirit art. When she came to me, um, we sat down and I'm like, you're an artist. Well, you should just draw it. The first time she tried, she channeled an art artist that came through and drew a picture. For me, I took I, my love for horses and I made Mystic Horse Journeys where you can do a horse healing session where we can go out via horseback. I do a session with the horses tied up next to us. And then we ride back. It's, a all, it's almost an all-day event. It's, it's pretty involved, but you're really connecting with the horses. So to me, nothing's impossible. My love for horses, my spirit world, well, let's put it together. Let's do some horsey lean clinics also. And, 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 but I'm following my, my passion, my passion for animals, horses, passion for the spirit world and what I do. So I came up with a way of, of bridging that gap. It's very simple, but people overcomplicate things. You know, they think it's too, too hard or too, no, follow the energy. If the energy is easy and it's flowing, do it. Okay. It's fun. It's lots of fun. There's so many things that you can do to incorporate your spirituality into your everyday work, but people just don't do it. I used to do all kinds of things when I worked at the car dealership. Um, if I knew I was going to call someone and they were like off the chart angry, I would visualize sending them white light before I talked to them. I would visualize the way the conversation was going to go before I talked to them. And it worked out. A lot of times I could read over the phone what, would the, what was behind the scenes with that person. I had one woman one time, um, she authorized repairs on her vehicle. And then she called back like hour and a half, two hours later, one of the stop repairs. And I knew that her husband was abusive. I just picked up on that and that it hit the fan that she authorized those repairs and that if I didn't stop the work, she would have a lot of problems at home. So I made the decision to stop the work. They had already started it. I paid the technician for what he did and, 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 and just wrote the whole ticket off so that she wouldn't have to deal with her husband. That's how I used my intuition. That's how I use my psychic abilities. So you too can do that in everyday life. It's a, it's a tool. It's a really useful tool. Especially how many of you are single and dating? Yeah. Use the psychic abilities. Okay. Go with your gut instinct. Don't go against your gut instinct. If, it's, if you have a pit in your stomach, like every time I thought about going back to corporate, I got sick. I had head owners calling me for, for two years. And every time I would avoid the phone call, I would feel nauseous. All of my body was telling me, don't do it, don't do it. Okay? So pay attention to what your body is intuitively telling you. Will you keep me on track? <laughs> How many? I got like 15 minutes, right? So can't have any questions about anything? Come on. Yeah. Um, so I, I did a deal with Sessa with you last week, and you know, I, I kind of wanted physical. I got emotional or mental healing, which is great. Now I'm actually starting to feel the physical healing. But one of the things you said to me, and I'm not sure how to, is I don't know how to begin the conversation with. Oh, with your with your guides with spirit. Yeah. Up to them, very like, how do you? Hey guys, that's how I started. And like, do I ask them for things or do I tell them what I want? Like, how do you actually start to build that relationship? 
what I do, um, when I started building my relationship, it was through meditation. Meditation is key to, to connect with your team, guides. I call them friends because I have a friendship with mine. I have a working friendship with my team. So every morning when I come in, I touch in with them. Like today, I, I made a little, I said, hey, guys, um, I, I gave them a little task to do, and they'll see if they'll do it. Spirit's very clever. So I said, hey, guys, if you want to, um, if you get this to happen while I speak, we'll see if it happens. But that's how I talk to my team. I just talk to them like a friend. And I'll even tell them when I'm mad. You know, I had um, a situation a few months ago where I lost three people. And one of the clients I was working with for three and a half years, she had a glioblastoma, which is brain cancer, which is basically a death sentence, for those of you that don't know. Um, and it was on the right side of her brain. She called me the day that she got diagnosed. I went to the hospital. I worked on her Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday night, she had brain surgery at 7. She was out of the hospital the next day by the afternoon, home recovering. I worked with her for three and a half years. We got to know each other really well. We had grandchildren within a few days of each other. Um, so we went through a lot. Her glioblastoma came back on the opposite side. It was inoperable. She had just months to live. My friend, Lynette Baumgart, who was a practitioner, hypnotherapist, wonderful, wonderful human being. She went in the hospital on a Monday. I did a healing session on her remotely and I, I got that it didn't take. I got that it wasn't accepted. That Wednesday she had surgery. They found out that she had bone, she had cancer throughout her body. They, her arm was broken. They went in to put a pin in and they found that there was a mass there. She died a week later. And then I had another client that just showed up at my classes. She had a colostomy bag and I was doing work with her. She died. I was very angry at my team. I was very angry at spirit. I'm like, guys, you know, you want me to do this healing work and all these people died. I said, me, I, you know, and I was very angry. And this is the first time I've ever said this. I said, I should just go back to corporate. I'm not making a difference. And um, it was a poor pity me. It was an ego pity me moment. I'll be the first to admit because ego is something you want to keep a healthy ego. The Enneagram, shout out to the Enneagram. I found out about healthy and unhealthy versions. And... Um, so I sat down to do a remote session with a gentleman. And as I sat down, I started to go into trance. Now trance is an altered state, very euphoric, bliss, love it. And I, I'm there about four or five hours a day. So I'm in trance and all of a sudden I feel, and, and no lie, I feel a hand like this on this knee. And it was that solid. I knew I didn't have to look because I knew it was spirit. And then it started rubbing my knee like this and patting my knee. And the amount of love that came through, that energy was off the charts. I started crying. It, it moved my leg. It moved my pant leg like that. It was that physical. And, um, and that happens in my space anyway, so it didn't, it didn't surprise me. But the amount of love that came with that, that was them, my friends, coming through and saying, it's okay, we love you, we got you. You're, you're, you always have that support, guys. You just don't know how to feel it or recognize it as of yet. That's what I do. I help people understand what's happening with them. The weird stuff that happens. The weird sensations on your bodies. You know, things that happen you can't explain. But for my team, my friends, to, to spend that much energy, it takes a lot of energy for them to build up to come through and do that. For them to do that in my comfort of need or my hour of need when I really had, was losing faith on them and they knew it, they reached out. You can have an intimate relationship like that with your team. It's possible. Everybody can have that. It's not just me. I'm not special. Everybody can do this. Everybody has these abilities to some degree or not. Uh, one thing, you know, you have a certain clair that is very important that you have that is prominent for you. I find that most people that are clairsentient have had major trauma in their childhood. How many of you have had trauma in your childhood? How many of you can walk in a room and feel 
oh, that person's in a bad space, that person, oh, no, I need to stay away from that person. You do it naturally because as a child, you had to cultivate that ability to be safe. Okay? I would not be standing here today doing the work I do, doing the healing work I do, if I wouldn't have had those tragedies in my life. My parents got divorced when I was four or five. My hair fell out because of the stress. We were a single, my mom was a single mother with children, divorcee in the 70s, so you can imagine. We got put in the divorcee section in the, in the apartment complex. My mother was a wonderful woman. I love her, we were best friends, but she liked bad boys. She's very smart and, and independent, supportive, but she had bad taste in men. As a child, I remember a man coming in because my mom caught him doing something he shouldn't be doing, and my mom had a temper. He came over to the house, ripped the phone out of the wall, and proceeded to beat her. I was six. I woke up to that. I was molested when I was 10 by my stepfather. And then I lost my mother in a horseback riding accident. I was out with her when it happened. And then I was there with my brother when he died. So all these tragedies that people call tragedies were divinely orchestrated. I, I feel I had a part in that too, to some degree. Because when we incarnate, we choose everything that's gonna happen. I wouldn't be standing here today if that didn't happen to me. An ultimate victim being the ultimate healer, okay? So take those adversities and, and find strength in them and find purpose in them. Sometimes you don't see what the purpose is when it's happening. Like when I was going through with my mother, I had, um, she did come visit me. I didn't recognize that it was mediumship at that time. Um, you know, and, and she helped me on my path. She continued to guide me when she crossed over, and she told me that. A few years ago, I was sitting in Sedona playing my flute, and she came to me and she said, you know, you're on your path, so you're not going to see me as much. I'm not going to be around as much. I was really heartbroken about that because my I love my mom. And she says, you know, I've got things I need to do on this side, and you're on your way, so I will be in touch. And that's how she left it. I do see my relatives. It is, it is hard being a medium sometimes and having someone that you love cross over. It can make it a little more difficult when you can see them and they're right there, but you can't touch them. Okay, so... I mean, I can go on and on with all different types of stories and things that have happened throughout my life. Um, I can say that my life has been enriched by putting spirit in it, putting God back in it. I've always, I've always believed in God. Um, but the spirit connection is amazing. If you start really playing with the spirit world, it can be very fulfilling for you. And you're never alone. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can go on my website, too. It's got all of them. I am offering a six-week series at Everything Just Rocks starting in March. Um, and it's beginning. It's, it's beginning basic um, spiritual metaphysical uh, work. So we're going to start off, do you need protection? Cord cutting, clearing a space. You know, um, you're going to have a lot of people tell you that you should be doing something, but it doesn't resonate with you, so it's not your truth. I don't use protection. Spiritual protection. Now I'm pound past that, ladies. Come on, now I'm 59. I'm past that. But anyway, I use humor in my in my work, and I'm I'm sorry if I'm a little off color sometimes. I worked with men for my entire life, and I have a house full of men. I have no girls. The only t estrogen in my house are my animals. Um, but um, it, so it's going to be that. It's going to be. Um, learning how to read auras and chakras. I do chakra tune-ups on people, which are amazing. It takes about two hours to do a chakra tune-up, but I can read the body and I see past lives. Um, you're gonna learn how to do that. You're gonna learn about the different types of mediumship. There's mental and there's physical. There's, there's two different types. Most people are mental. Physical mediums, there's like one in 200,000 that do physical mediumship, and they have to have a chink in their DNA to accomplish that. Um, automatic writing, channeling. What is channeling? What is trance? 
um, just all all the different modalities, how to work with, with crystals and pendulums. I don't work with um, those that much, but I do when I do chakra tune-ups. I do work with uh, crystals. So, um, and you'll learn how to do chakra turnip and work with crystal bowls. So you'll work with sound healing also. So this is just a six week series. You don't have to go to every single one of them, but you'll be missing out if you, because you'll be missing something. Um, and it's $25 a class. It's two hours. It's from 1030 to, um, 1230 at everything just rocks on a Saturday. Uh, everything just rocks in Tempe and Tempe. I have a spiritual center in cave Creek. Now, tomorrow, I know you're having an event, um, I hold a, a monthly event called the Sisterhood of Healers. It is a free event that Spirit asked me to put forward, and it is from 10 to 1130. You can come in for a reading and a healing and refreshments. It's the first Sunday of every month at my center in Cave Creek. I also will be, um, I'm holding a spiritual workshop sitting in the experience February 16th, 17th, and 18th. I am flying over two tutors from the UK to teach this class. They're gonna be covering forensic mediumship and psychic. They're also gonna be covering city in a cabinet, city in trance and healing. It's $440, I still have a couple spots left. Yeah, I, ha I just have like two spots left and it's gonna be intense. It's from nine to five. You have two quality tutors from the UK now, the difference between some of these teachers that you're, you might have experienced, the UK is very much into spiritualism, spiritualists. So it has to be proven, factual, scientific. So that's how they teach. So if your mind is more scientific and more factual and you want not so much the woo-woo, and I, I don't mean to say, I, I don't know what else word to give it. This is the type of tutoring that you would want. Okay, I'm taking the class. My education never stops because I study after the fact. After something happens, I study, and that's how I get confirmation I'm on the right track. The trans healing, um, what I do, it was channeled through me. It's not like what anybody else does. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but that was spirit taught. And then I get confirmation after the fact that I'm on the right track. But those are some of the classes I've got there. Um, every Monday, every Monday night, I have a practice group at Everything Just Rocks from seven to nine. So if you want to come and practice your intuitive abilities in a safe, loving environment, non-judgmental, this is the class. Um, I am going to. If you go on my website, it's got a list. I am pretty current on that. That's the good corporate side of me. I keep everything current and for professional. And I just wanted to, this is a little sheet that I handed out when I, I did a mediumship class. And it talks about the different types of mediumship that people aren't familiar with. And that's, I've got it there if you wanna get it and I have brochures and everything. Um, I am an angel guide class or a guide class is coming up in March. That is a wonderful class because I teach about guides, how to work with them, how to connect with them and how to um, have a better relationship with your team and who they are. And then I have a colleague that she reads for five minutes, your guides. She will sit down with you and it's like a campfire between you and her. And then all your guides appear and she talks to them. So you'll get a five minute reading with that. That's a wonderful class that always sells out. And then I do my horse healing events. Um, I have lots of events, I'm always busy. Always busy, which is good. Except the end of the month, I am, I am going to Cuba. My son is taking me to Cuba on the 23rd to the 1st, so I, I won't be available. Um, but other than that, you guys can always reach out to me. I don't charge for questions. I charge for sessions. If you want a mentoring session, that's one thing. If you just have a question and say, hey, you know what? After you spoke, this came up. What do you think about this? I'll, I'll talk to you. Okay, because I was out there alone by myself. And that's why I started these groups and these classes. So you have community. I think that's great and it, and it serves a purpose. I really do. I don't discount anything as long as it helps that person be a better person. That's how I, that's how I look at religion. That's how I look at everything, you know, and, and they're tools that these, that people use and they're great tools and they help a lot of people, you know, mediumship's not for everybody. And, and astrology, I mean, I love astrology. I don't know anything about it. It requires too much math. <laughs> Same thing with numerology. I stay away from that, you know? Um, but yeah, I think they're great modalities. I think crystals have a place too. I think everything does. 
It's just not for me. You have to find what you align with and what you best work with. That's why I'm saying you have a certain clair that's going to be prominent. Mine was clairvoyance, clairsentient, I also felt. I didn't know I was an empath until my 30s, and it created such an issue in our marriage because he's such an extrovert and wants to go out and have fun, and I don't want to be around people. And I never knew why I felt sick and bad after I'd go out in crowds. I never knew why. I could walk. I'd go in a mall, and I'd see someone. And I'm like, oh, they're going to die. I would see stuff like that. I'm like, I don't want to be around this. And... Then I realized I could do something about that, that it wasn't, I didn't have to be that way. And then it switched. I'm more the extrovert and he's more the introvert now. But the joke of the thing of our marriage was, is we were the first people or the last people to show up for a party and the first people to leave. And he would get mad at me. We'd have arguments about it because that's just how I was. And I had no idea why it was affecting my life. So, um, Pay attention to what your what your Claire is. And I think this sheet has the, diff the explanations of the Claire's on it. Yeah, I put them on there. And, um, and lean into that and start working with that as a tool. Okay? And that's how I would start. Just follow the energy. Hey, this is easy for me. Oh, Oracle cards are great. I work with Oracle cards. Yeah, this is easy for me. I get lots of hits. Then work with Oracle cards. It's a gateway drug to the spirit world, you know? Um, so just, just go with, your team will guide you. If you just listen, they'll tell you what's best suited for you. When I first started, I thought I would be an evidential medium because that's how it started. Getting up here, giving readings, evidential, everybody rah, rah, this and that, and that's ego, right? Spirit had tried me in several different modalities until they saw I best align at this time in my life with the healing modality and the teaching modality. And I'm like, okay, guys, if that's what's best for me, I'm going to go with it, whatever you say. I finally gave up the ego. Ego is really hard. I have a shirt that says your ego is not your amigo, and it's got a Mexican with two six shooters when I teach. And, and it's true. Your ego is not your friend. Your ego stops you from being connected to spirit. Ego is edging God out. Remember the cartoons when we were kids? The devil on the left shoulder, the, the angel on the right shoulder, you know why? The left shoulder is, your, is, the, is the analytical, scientific part of your brain. The right side is the creative spirit side. Pay attention to where you're getting information. Do you feel it on this side? Do you feel it on this side? Where do you feel it? Yeah. A lot of that will come with practice. The more that you practice, the more you'll get those hits of, oh, yeah, that was right. Oh, and that's what it felt like when it came in. Oh, so I know when I get that feeling that that's spirit directly talking and I can give that information. Uh, you know, a lot of times, sometimes I think they test us. I think they want to know, are they listening? Are they going to follow with what we want, what our guidance is? You have free will, so you can say no. But you got to step out of your ego and you got to step out of, the insecurity of whether this message is good or is right or not. Um, sometimes it's about you learning uh, humility, you know, so it, 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 there's so much that can be involved with that. All I can say is I get a lot of people with the same thing that come to my classes. They don't trust. And once they sit in the class and they start getting readings and they start getting hits, confirmations, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, you were right. And you're going to be like, wow, I can do it. One of the exercises I do is a psychometry quiz. It's, an, it's just an exercise. And I give each person a rock with a number on it. And you hold that rock. You put your energy on it. And then you put it back in the bag and somebody grabs your rock. 
They answer 25 questions based off of the energy of that rock. They don't know who had that rock. You'd be surprised at how accurate you would be. Very surprised. And um, so be easy on yourself. Be gentle. Come to one of my classes and I will, I'll sit with you and talk to you and, and guide you with any questions that you've got. Because I love to see more people out there. We need more light workers. We need more people doing this and sharing this because it's becoming more mainstream. I'm finding more people that were just normal people coming in my classes. They're not wearing crystals or tattoos and piercings and dressed weird. They're like my next door neighbor. We're finding more of that coming in to the spirit world now into, into spirituality. So there's more mainstream people out there and you're just using it in a different way. So practice just come in and practice and i can give you some techniques to strengthen those abilities okay because everybody has them just got to listen and and just learn how to listen how does it feel when it comes in your body how do you feel spirit how many of you feel spirit okay to me it's um i'll feel like um uh tingling like i have loose hair in my face and i don't cobwebby i might feel like i have a hat on but i don't you might feel pressures on your body or chills. All that is spirit. A lot of people mistake anxiety attacks for anxiety attacks. They're not. Some of it can be spirit. When a, when a energy, your guides touch in with you and they get too close into your auric field and, and your vibration does not align with theirs, it can feel like a panic attack. So if you ever have a panic attack and you question that, stop and say, if this is spirit, please stop and move back away from me. This is too much for me. And it'll subside. They come through that way. You just don't recognize it. They come through at night when you're laying down to go to sleep. Lots of things can happen. But we, I'm running out of time. Um, reach out to me if you have any questions. It was a pleasure and honor to be able to have you here today. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. If you want to come out tomorrow, come out tomorrow. It's a free event. We have um, lots of uh, snacks and refreshments. And I have wonderful colleagues that donate their time. I donate my space and time but they come out, so enjoy. Eat, eat.